In this lecture, we'll see some basic concepts of radiation fluxes and some mathematical concepts used to handle them. All bodies emit and absorb radiation. So this radiation is called as the thermal radiation. All bodies, including gases, at uh, high temperatures or semi-transparent medium, all uh, atomic molecules uh, emit radiation. However, for an engineering approximation, since we are interested in heat transfer purpose between bodies, we'll approximate uh, thermal radiation as a surface phenomena. That is because anything deep inside the surface, in it, the radiation emitted by a collection of molecules or atoms, individual atoms, is absorbed by the uh, molecules surrounding them. So this emission and absorption carries up until the surface. So the surface radiation is what effectively is visible to bodies outside this uh, body. So for an engineering appro approximation, uh, considering radiation as a surface for phenomena is a good approximation. There are two key aspects of radiation that we have to remember, which will come repeatedly throughout this uh, radiation uh, lecture as well as series of lectures. One is the wavelength, other is direction. That is, the energy of electromagnetic radiation is dependent on the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation as well as the direction of one, the emitter, as well as receiver. So the wavelength dependence is called as the spectral distribution. Spectral, whenever we see a word called spectral associated with a wavelength dependence. So anything that has got a spectral dependence means that it has got a wavelength dependence. For example, you could say the intensity of radiation depends on wavelength. So that is called the spectral distribution of intensity. The second important aspect is the direction. The direction of the emitter can emit a radiation at different in intensities in different directions. So the, the direction of emitter uh, becomes an important uh, aspect. Similarly, the direction of the receiver. So if the receiver is in different direction, it might receive different intensities in different directions. So both direction and intensity, direction and wavelength are key aspects of handling radiation fluxes. What are the components of a radiation flux? Consider a irradiation G. We saw this before as well. In a semi-transparent medium, that means that part of it is absorbed and part is transmitted. So all surfaces can have a part reflected, part absorbed, and part transmitted. So the overall irradiation is divided between, radiative flux is divided between reflective flux, absorptive flux, and transmitted flux. Now, we have seen that all bodies emit uh, radiation, which is thermal radiation. That is this E. Now, the total emission that comes out of a surface is a combination of this reflection, which is partly coming from the irradiation, and a thermal emission coming from the body and effectively the surface. The total of emission and reflection is called as the radiosity and denoted by a, a symbol J. To handle radiation fluxes, it is important to understand differential solid angle. What is differential solid angle? Consider a small surface, dA, that is emitting radiation. What is shown here is an expanded view of a solid angle around this vector. So we have a collection of uh, different rays 
that is the um, uh, light rays coming emanating out of this point in this direction and we want to find the flux across this uh, solid angle so this angle is called as a solid angle which is similar to the angle uh, which we see for circles but this is defined for spheres just as in uh, circle we have r d theta as this length for solid angle it is r square d omega so r square d omega defines the area just as r d theta defines length r square d omega defines this area so what is special about this area for radiation flux is that the flux is same across any d omega so whatever is emanating here with this flux is the same of course the area changes but the uh, whatever rays that are coming out from here the number of rays is the same across this uh, solid angle so that's why it's important to define what is a solid angle and then uh, derive all quantities based on that so to do that we'll consider a spherical coordinate system we have the usual notation phi is the um, azimuthal angle and this is the solid angle in the spherical coordinate system then for a distance r and this is theta this length is r sin theta we have we want to determine this area so this length is r d theta which is along this direction and this length is defined by r sin theta d phi so this length is r sin theta d phi this is r d theta so we have area is r square sin theta d theta d phi thereby substituting this here we get d omega which is a solid angle is sin theta d theta d phi and this keeps uh, coming throughout the discussions and derivations in uh, radiation fluxes let us now define the energy of radiation so the energy of radiation is quantified in terms of the parameter called as radiation intensity radiation intensity is a large uh, quantity with several definitions so just pay attention one by one so firstly it is the rate of radiant energy which means it is watts radiant energy is in watts rate of, uh, radiant energy is in uh, joules rate of radiant energy is in watts that's not a lot that's not the unit of i i has some more things in the direction theta comma phi so you have to specify the direction one so we have specify the direction so i is in the direction theta comma phi then there is a unit area of the emitting surface there is no receiving surface here we are talking about what is emitting so there is unit area of the emitting surface which is normal to uh, this direction so what does that mean let us look at this picture suppose you are looking at this area from this angle theta then the area that effectively you see is da cos theta so da is the normal direction area is uh, uh, defined by the normal vector perpendicular to the area perpendicular to this plane so the area projected area which is coming uh, perpendicular to this uh, vector here projected area of this is da1 cos theta so da1 cos theta is the projected area of this in this plane perpendicular to this ray and since we are defining per unit area of this emitting surface normal to the direction of theta and phi so that is this normal to the direction of theta and phi of this emitting area then per unit solid angle so it's not just sufficient to tell what area it is emitting from 
but also how much angle that you are considering. Because if you consider more angle, you're going to have more rays inside it. But given a, a solid angle, the amount of rays across the solid angle is the same. So it's important to define the solid angle per unit solid angle, then again per unit wavelength. So each wavelength can have a different intensity. So the same material can be emitting wavelengths, emitting radiation at different wavelengths and each wavelength can have a different intensity. So you have red wave, you have a red color here, you have a, a blue here, all coming in the same direction, all coming from the same surface, but because their wavelengths are different, the intensity can be different. So therefore, coming back, re read the entire thing, we have, this is the entire formula, emission of radiant energy, rate of emission of radiant energy, which is dq, is joules per second, in the direction phi comma theta, per unit area of the emitting surface, which is da1 cos theta, per unit solid angle, which is d omega, per unit wavelength d lambda. So using this expression, we will uh, derive several quantities. Firstly, the emissive power of an interface. The emissive power of an interface is given by different uh, integrals of this uh, quantity. So we have dq, which is the joules per second, which is watts, per unit area of the emitting surface. Now here we are considering this definition is such a way that it's unit area of the emitting surface, not in normal to any direction, but just unit area of the emitting surface. This is just a definition. And it is a per unit wavelength. So whenever we see a word called as spectral, it means that something is a function of lambda. Okay, so we want to find spectral hemispherical. Hemispherical means we want to find all the other uh, emissive power in all the angles, that is the solid angles, which covers the entire hemisphere because we are considering a surface all um, emission that means for the surface is only the hemispherical surface, nothing, it's not the entire spherical surface because below it is bulk. This is the surface area of the object. So the entire hemispherical surface. So integral over hemispherical surface of this dq by da1 d lambda. And if you substitute dq from the previous expression, we'll get this i lambda e, which is radiation intensity cos theta, this cos theta comes from this da1 and sin theta comes from the solid angle. So this is integral over hemispherical surface, but not an integral over lambda. So this is a function of lambda. So that's why this is called as an spectral hemispherical emissive power. Spectral stands for function of lambda, hemispherical because it's inter integrated over the entire uh, hemispherical uh, solid angle. And that is just given by this expression. Now, when you have an emitter, this is just a definition. So you have this lambda, I of lambda E, which is not a function of theta and phi. So irrespective of the direction, irrespective of this direction theta phi, if in all the directions theta and phi, it is not dependent on the angle, but only dependent on the wavelength, then we call this emitter, this emitter which is sitting here, da1, that emitter is called as a diffuse emitter. So in certain cases, when we have this diffuse emitter, we can pull out this out of the integral and integrate this alone separately. We can also define what is called as a spec total emissive power. What is total emissive? You have this emissive, this is spectral emissive power at a given wavelength. 
the total emissive uh, power is integral over all the wavelengths. So I have a spectral uh, hemispherical and the hemispherical I'm not only integrating over a given lambda, I'm also integrating over all possible lambdas from zero to infinity. So this becomes the hemi total hemispherical em emissive power or simply total emissive power. So this total emissive power is integral zero to infinity of d lambda. This is, uh, this is a notation that you may not be used to, but just get used to it. Many um, uh, physics books use this way. So lambda, the variable of integral is written along with the integration limit. So you know that this is applied to this. This is particularly useful when you have multiple integrals. So we write d theta means theta goes from zero to two pi, pi by two. D phi means phi goes from zero to pi. Instead of putting this at the end and then relating this, this becomes a compact notation that this is the uh, differential uh, angle which goes from the uh, limits, zero to two pi. Okay, so here it means uh, zero to infinity of uh, d lambda. And then if you um, in, use this uh, independent uh, uh, diffuse uh, function for uh, radiative radiation intensity. So this will be left out here. We pull out of this. Then this integral is simply this uh, solid angle integrated over the entire uh, hemisphere, which is simply pi. And this is noted, denoted as the this is the total emissive radiation intensity, that is IE, times pi, that is the emissive power. Now we'll come to irradiation. So what we saw before is emission, which is something out of the surface, emanating out of the surface. Now we're talking about incident radiation, which is called as irradiation. Irradiation also uses a similar concept of uh, solid angles, except that now it is coming through this to the surface DA1. Earlier we had surface DA1 emitting through the solid angle. Now we have something that is coming, any incident light which comes through this is called the uh, set of collection of rays coming through the solid angle reaching the surface DA1 at an angle theta comma phi. So all the derivations remain, all the expressions remain the same, except that the total spectral hemispherical irradiation, now this is spectral because this G is function of lambda, hemispherical because we're going to integrate it over the hemisphere of this uh, irradiation, what per meter square is this, what per meter square per uh, incident surface and D lambda. Now, instead of having emission, we'll call it as incident. So this is uh, incident uh, radiation intensity. Earlier we had emission radiation intensity, but the other expressions remain exactly the same. Similarly, you can integrate and find out the total irradiation, which again is an integral over lambda from zero to uh, infinity of the spectral hemispherical irradiation. So that again gives you pi times incident uh, radiation intensity pi. To summarize, radiation fluxes have two important properties, directional and spectral. The emissive power is per unit area of the emitting surface. And irradiation is per unit area of the incident surface. But for this difference, the expression look uh, uh, similar. A diffuse emitter is a uniform uh, is emitter which is uniform intensity in all directions. And we have introduced a new term in this lecture, which is radiosity. That is the sum of emission and reflection. Thank you.